wait, <laughs> just in case you felt a frown on your forehead, I'm not talking about smart girls. You're welcome. Although I don't have anything against smart goals, this video aims to present to you with strategies that are fresh and somewhat unconventional as opposed to what I was really familiar with. Look at how awkward this is. Try again, try again. The idea of setting goals that invite errors as entry points as opposed to failures is an outlook that immediately catches my attention. I'm referring to the 85% rule here. So with 85%, it's obviously not 100%, which leaves some room for error. And when we're allowed to make mistakes, we're allowed to get frustrated. And this frustration can then queue up the brain area to be more alert. So the next time you go back to that area where you made the mistake, well, then you're more focused and more engaged. So what this means is apparently you're in a better position to learn after you've made a mistake. I have an embarrassing story to illustrate this. My husband and I went traveling and I made an effort to try and learn some of the language of the country we we're staying in. And we made a friend at the gym that we were going to. And one day when we walked into this hotel to go use the gym, I told our friend, I'm excited to see you. And he looked at me and he said, I don't have a problem, but I think your husband might. And I was so embarrassed. And he ended up explaining that excited in his language had very different connotations to what it has in mind. And he taught me the word happy instead, which was a safer word to use. But because I made such an embarrassing mistake, I almost immediately was able to learn the new word. My mind was hyper-focused and I was very eager on fixing this error. You should listen to this podcast episode for a deep dive into the psychology and neuroscience of goals and goal achievement. But this gentleman discusses that there is a level to just how hard something should be. And that is that you are making errors around 15% of the time. And this relates nicely to when my goal was to do a pull-up. At the start, I could do probably about 5% of a pull-up. But then I changed my goal so that the new goal was rather on focusing and building the right muscles to be able to do a pull-up. Some of these exercises included me needing to hang on a bar for a minute. That was far harder than I thought it would be. Or I had to do 10 push-ups. I could only do a few at a time. I'd have a break and then go at it again. And again and again. I took lots of breaks while I was doing these push-ups. <laughs> Going from the ground to a pull-up with no smaller goals would have been impossible for me. But building up slowly, even though that was challenging, served as entry points towards the final goal. Look at this. This has been the goal that I want to materialize the most out of all of my goals, <laughs> but it's also the goal with the most resistance attached to it. Dr. Heidi Grant Halverson, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, is a social psychologist who researches, writes, and speaks about the science of leadership and motivation. Well, she has a brilliant quote that I like to refer to as the when and where rule. I hope I've coined that, but if somebody else already has, let me know who that person is in the comments. <laughs> Dr. Heidi says that to seize the moment, decide when and where you will take each action you want to take in advance. If I want to write a movie, I need to know when and where I'm gonna make this magic happen. I wish I had a hard and fast rule as to when I actually work on my screenplay. Most nights it's after I put the kiddos to bed. I don't always get this right, but when I I do it's amazing because instead of watching content in the evenings i create a piece of content that i will hopefully get to watch one day but that said because this feels like a particularly vulnerable activity for me as it's something that's really hard <laughs> but also something that oh my goodness i just want to do if i don't create that when and where I just don't get around to doing it. I don't know, maybe you can relate. Maybe you wanna write a novel or you wanna learn a language or maybe just connect with your partner. If you outline the when and where of it all, it sometimes just helps you to take that action. Studies show that this kind of planning will help your brain to detect and seize the opportunity when it arises, increasing your chances of success by roughly 300%. There was a time when I felt that I thrived with the when and the where, and that was when I wanted to learn basic Italian. So I would usually commute to and from work, and I used to put a CD, remember those, <laughs> in my car, and then I would just copy along to and from work, and that actually helped me learn quite a bit of Italian. Look at this lady. She is single-handedly the reason why I have continued running despite having two kids under the age of two. 
I read a Forbes article that referenced a statistic that you are 65% more likely to reach a goal if you have an accountability partner. This research was originally presented by the American Society of Training and Development. I tried to read that study and it was definitely not a page turner. I can tell you that much for free, but it's linked in my description if you want to give it a try. Then I found another article that referenced a study on accountability by the Association of Talent Development. The research found that individuals have the following probabilities of completing a goal when they took these actions. Having an idea or a goal, 10% likely to complete the goal. Consciously deciding that you will do it, 25%. Deciding when you will do it, 40%. Planning how to do it, 50%. Committing to someone that you will do it, 65%. Having a specific accountability appointment with someone you've committed to, 95%. Again, I'm not a scientist and didn't come up with these figures, so I've linked all of my sources in the description. Having an accountability buddy is a dream, but this is why coaches and trainers are invaluable in helping us achieve our goals too. I had the goal of wanting to learn to do a backflip. I would have never thrown myself backwards had there not been a professional standing alongside me. Also, I don't think I would have outlined my screenplay within the time frame that I outlined it had I not booked a consultation with a screenwriting professional. Getting that accountability, but also spending that money makes it difficult to flake out. Anyway, these three goal setting strategies have helped me work towards the goals that I may or may not accomplish. <laughs> If I change my mind about these goals or if I fail in the pursuit of achieving these goals, then at least I feel I've made an educated choice with regard to how I approach them in the first place. Maybe they could be helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you use these goal setting strategies or if one of them popped out to you that you'd like to try. I'd love to hear from you. I've got another exciting video coming out tomorrow as we continue with this challenge of getting our lives together. So subscribe if you'd like to be made aware of that. I'll see you then. Take care guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.